Liz Truss has just gone inside Buckingham Palace to formally tender her resignation. Of course, Liz Truss was the Prime Minister when the King became King. She was heavily involved in the Accession Council where the King was formally proclaimed our sovereign. And perhaps because it is, of course, her, his first Prime Minister, the King will continue to have quite a special relationship with Liz Truss. But nonetheless, we are expecting the new leader of the Conservative Party, Rishi Sunak, to follow in, in Liz Truss's footsteps to Buckingham Palace when Liz Truss departs. He will travel for an audience with the King at Buckingham Palace, where the King will ask him formally to, uh, to form a government in his name. He is the leader of the party with the majority of seats in the House of Commons and therefore can command the confidence of the House. Now, Rishi Sunak and the King have worked together before. It was in May when Rishi Sunak was Chancellor and the King was the Prince of Wales. They attended, they supported young people at a Prince's Trust uh, initiative, which is one of the King's former charities, uh, 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 through the UK government's Kickstart scheme. And no doubt they'll be working together for over the next couple of months. They'll have a weekly audience together. Of course, we're never privy to exactly what is said within those meetings between the King and his Prime Minister. And I'm sure, I predict, in just a month's time, Rishi Sunak will be heavily involved in the upcoming state visit of the South African President, hosted by the King and the Queen Consort at Buckingham Palace. We're expecting that at the end of November. But for now, the King is going to be appointing his new Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Mm. It's interesting. We saw the King himself drive to Buckingham Palace just around half an hour ago. He's not actually living in Buckingham Palace at the moment. Why is that? No, he's not. He's uh, living at Clarence House. Buckingham Palace is in the middle of a 10-year refurbishment programme. It's about five years into it. Uh, there are, in parts of Buckingham Palace at least, still scaffolding everywhere. But Buckingham Palace is still very much the home of the British monarchy in terms of the business. It's perhaps used, uh, for want of a better phrase, an office for His Majesty the King to carry out state business, business like appointing his new Prime Minister, like hosting receptions. So he spends a lot of time here, His Majesty the King, but of course his home where he lives, his private time, is mm. currently at Clarence House. There are rumours, there is talk that uh, he will eventually move into Buckingham Palace with the Queen Consorts, but it will be perhaps after the renovations are completed, which is scheduled for 2027. Mm. And one of the things that Liz Truss mentioned in her uh, final speech uh, just a moment ago was that she oversaw the transition uh, of the monarchy from the late Queen Elizabeth uh, to King Charles. I mean, that is something incredibly significant um, in, in the history of this country that at least uh, Liz Truss can take with her. Oh, indeed. It was literally seven weeks ago exactly that Britain's longest reigning monarch appointed what turned out to be Britain's shortest serving prime minister. And it was just two days after that that Her Majesty the Queen passed away at Balmoral Castle. Liz Truss spoke to the nation on, on the day of, the, of Her Majesty's death outside the steps of Downing Street. And then as I mentioned earlier, was part of the Accession Council, a very important constitutional role, and also travelled to all four nations in the United Kingdom to attend services of thanksgiving for Her Majesty the Queen's reign, something, of course, the King also did. She also uh, did a reading at Her Majesty the Queen's state funeral inside Westminster Abbey, and I think perhaps that is going to be one of the lasting legacies of Liz Truss's quite short uh, premiership.